I get paid for doing some weird things. Hi. In this episode, we're going to take a look at batteries, in particular the R&D AA cell and the R&D AAA cell battery. Now, I was a little bit underwhelmed when I was asked to review batteries. I mean, they're not the most interesting devices in the universe. But it does pose an interesting question, though. If you were to take, say, this um, AA cell from Varta and compare it to this AA cell from r and I mean, how do you know which one's a better battery? I mean, obviously, there's a price difference, and maybe you know uh, one brand and don't know the other brand. But what really constitutes a good battery? So to answer the question of how you go about testing a AA or a AAA cell battery, I reached out to those titans of test and measurement, Keysight, and I asked them a simple question. If you needed to test a battery, how would you go about doing it? Their answer to that problem was the B2902A Precision Source Measure Unit. Now, a source measure unit, or an SMU, is a device that combines um, basically three different types of test and measurement systems. It, it is a um, power supply, an extremely accurate power supply. It's a programmable load, and it's also a multimeter. It can measure what's going on. So you can use it basically in two different ways. If you have something like a mobile phone or an Internet of Things device, and you're interested in how much power that, that device is consuming, you can supply power to it using the source measure unit and then measure the amount of consumed power over time. You can also do the inverse of that, which is to load something accurately. So if you have something like a battery, you can load it at a particular rate and you can measure the performance of the battery over time. There's two big advantages to an SMU. One is that it's a combined test and measure unit, so it, it's quite simple to set up for these types of tests. You don't have to have three separate things and, and wire them all up and program them separately. The other thing is it's really, really accurate. I mean, if you remember back when you were at school and, and you used to make uh, little batteries out of lemons in the physics lessons where you, you poke the lemon with a couple of nails and it produces an extremely small current, well, this thing will actually tell you what type of nail to use. Another consideration when you're testing something like a battery is heat. I mean, when you're drawing current from something, then it's going to get hot and you want to keep an eye on that. So to do that, I'm going to use a FLIR C3 thermal imaging camera. Now, this is a fairly low-end um, FLIR camera, but it has a couple of really nice features for this. One is that you can connect it via USB to a computer and it pops up as a webcam. So you can actually record the thermal video coming off of the camera. And the other is it comes with this nice little tripod mount. So I can put it on a little tripod, point it at the battery and just keep an eye on things as the test progresses. So one of the other issues you have when doing this type of testing is that you have to collect quite a lot of data. I mean, it, it takes a while to test a battery. So one of the nice things about the Keysight SMU is that you can use their application called Benchview that basically enables you to not only control the test and measurement device from your desktop computer, but you can also then do data logging. You can actually collect the information from the device as it does the test. So here you can see that running. So first of all, we can switch on the, the device and that starts testing the battery. Actually, this is a R&D AA cell and, and I'm discharging it at one amp, which is a very heavy load for this type of battery. But this is just to show you it working. So you can see initially the power drops quite rapidly, then it levels out for quite a while until the cell finally fails, at which point it drops down to zero volts. And you can also see in the thermal imaging that's going on that the battery gets hotter and hotter as the test progresses. But it's only around you know, 40 degrees C. It's, it's just warm, really, so it's nothing to worry about. So once you've collected all of the test results, the next problem you have is how do you interpret them? I mean, if I was to show you this graph, for example, and ask you a simple question like which battery is best, you'd probably pick battery number three because it has the most milliampers. The issue with that is that these three tests are actually done on the same battery. They're all R&D AA cells. The difference is the amount of load. It turns out that the heavier the load you put on the battery, generally the more inefficient it becomes and the less milliampers you get from it. So that really means that your choice of battery is kind of dependent on the application. So if, for example, you wanted to put the battery in a torch, that would draw quite a high current. Or if you put it in a multimeter, that would draw quite a low current. And your choice of battery is really different depending on what type of application you have. The, the problem with that, of course, is that with AA cells and AAA cells, you don't really know what the load is going to be because you don't really know what the application is. So for these tests, we're going to take a range. We're going to start at a high load of 500 milliamps and a moderate load of 250 milliamps, which are both quite high loads, but they should give a fairly good indication of how the battery performs. So let's look at some actual test results. Here you can see the results of testing AA cell batteries at 500 milliamps. The other batteries on test here are the GP Super, the Duracell, and Avata High Energy, which represent from around about the same sort of price point as the R&D AA and upwards. But there's a problem with this graph too. 
And that's that it shows the voltage coming from the battery from 1.5 volts when it's new, all the way down to zero volts when it's completely depleted. And the problem with that is that in most applications, your device will turn off long before you hit zero volts in the batteries. So really, when you're doing these types of tests, the sort of nominal cutoff level that you use is one volt. So here's the same graph again, but showing the cutoff level at one volt. And what you can see here is that the difference between the best performing battery and the worst performing battery is about 300 milliamperes. And now we can look at exactly the same test results, but a 250 milliamp test. And you'll see that the difference is about 400 milliamperes from the best performing battery to the worst. So now let's look at the same results, but for the AAA cells. Here you can see at 500 milliamps, the difference between the best performing battery and the worst performing battery is only about 150 milliamperes, which is even smaller than the difference between the AA's. And again, at 250 milliamp load, you can see the difference is even smaller. Between the best and the worst performer, the difference is only 80 milliamperes. So now we've seen the test results, the next question we have to ask ourselves is, how do we interpret them? I mean, there's a couple of different ways of looking at this, and, and I think what I've been trying to get at in this video is that this type of testing, like a lot of testing, is quite subjective. Now, broadly speaking, there's two different ways. One is to look at the actual pure longevity of the battery, you know, how long does the battery last before I need to replace it? And I think it's fair to say that the R&D batteries didn't come out the top of that list. They're clearly comparable to the other brands, but if you're looking for a longevity, then some of the other brands actually did better in the testing. However, if you look at this graph, what this graph shows is the relationship between the amount of money you spend on the battery and the amount of power you get for that money. So here in the milliamperes per euro, and these are the AA cells, and here this shows quite a different picture. The R&D battery is a very good performer. And if you look at this next graph, this shows the same thing for AAA cell batteries, which shows pretty much the same story. If you want value for money, if you want milliamperes per euro that you're spending, then R&D is a pretty good choice. Oh,